Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the interface type. Now, I'm going to warn you, interfaces can get pretty tricky. Well, they're kind of simple. They're not a storage type. And so I'm not exactly sure uh, when, if this is the exact right time to cover it. But since I'm not sure, I'm going to cover it anyway, since we're talking about types and it's definitely a type. I was hoping to have a, a chapter on interface, but then I kind of been conflicted about it, so I decided to cover it now. So anyway, fair warning that maybe we might not see everything about interfaces now, and maybe later we will come back to some interfaces. Just don't know. But what I'm trying to do is present materials in a way that as we go along and we learn new things, we keep building up, building on what we learned previously, right? So keep that in mind. Everything I cover and order I cover it is because I want to make sure that we just cover one little thing at a time and it sort of makes sense as we append new things onto it. So since we're talking about types, I know you create new types, interface is a type. So it sort of makes sense that we should kind of cover it now. We didn't really need interfaces before, so we didn't cover interfaces before when we were covering like basic types and so on, right? Okay, with that said, let's just jump in and let's see, we'll have plenty of opportunities to be confused about interfaces, so no need of me to keep talking about it. So what is an interface? And to get what an interface is, I'm kind of get at it by mentioning what it is and then draw a distinction between an interface and a struct because we kind of we understand what a struct is, hopefully by now, right? Our structure. And then we'll look at why interfaces are useful. So here's my definition. What are our interfaces used for? And it's not going to tell you what an interface is really exactly, but kind of think about it. An interface is a type, as we said, an interface is a type that defines a set of operations or method available. Now, available for what? Well, available for you to call, and we'll see. Now, think of it, for example, when we create a timer, um, we, way back when, um, when we were looking at GoRoutines, we created a timer, and in one of our example, uh, if we didn't create a timer, then think of, of the time object that we created and we can call method on it, okay? All right, so when you say um, time package that no, it returns an object and that's a time object. And then on that object, you're able to call Unix, the method Unix. If it doesn't make sense or you don't remember, that's okay, we're gonna be covering methods and for objects and you're going to get the difference between a method and a function in a bit. Again, don't worry about it. But the key takeaway is a type can implement or provide operations for several interfaces. Again, a lot of stuff packed into that one sentence, but you're going to see it over time and it's going to make sense. So an interface is a type and using an interface you can say, and you can't see my hand in the air, but Using an interface, you can say, these are the set of operations or method that are allowed by this type. And any other type that says it implements this interface means that oh, I can call these methods on that type. The other thing here is that a method can implement many interfaces. So one way of thinking of this is you as an individual can wear many hats. And by that I mean, you may be a student, a teacher, a parent, a grandparent, a friend, a colleague, all of those words you can think of are our interfaces. When you're a student, there's a set of things that are expected of you. So you go to a student and somebody said, give me a student, we're able to ask the student which school you're attending, which classes you're taking, how many credits per class, that or that. Those are the questions that are valid to ask a student. If someone is not a student, Asking them those questions, they'll look at you like you have 10 heads, and they should, because you're not a student. So those are not a, a um, permitted method or valid methods to ask a student, right? Questions, when I say methods, let's think of questions, okay? And if someone is a grandparent, well, you might reasonably be expected to ask them, how many kids do you have or had, and how many grandchildren? I'm a parent, and I'm not a grandparent, so asking me how many grandkids I have, Totally invalid question because I'm not a grandparent, but I'm a parent. So you can definitely ask me how many kids I have, okay? How long I've been a parent. And so any one type can implement um, any number of uh, interfaces. 
so long as they provide all the methods of the interface. So we can get back to that to see how it makes sense. So here's an example of some interfaces. So let's say we had an interface doc. Why would we have an interface doc? Is because we know that there are some questions or methods you can invoke or ask or expect a duck to be able to do. You expect a duck to be able to quack and you expect a duck to be able to waddle. And if it can't do that, then chances are it's not a duck. Okay, it may quack, but if that's all it's doing, you better be like, eh, it's not quite a duck, right? And there's three other um, examples I give here called Stringer. And that's the name of the interface. And what does it provide? It's simply, it's defines, not provide, it defines that a function that's called string with a capital S, when I call that function, I should be able to get back a string. And for any object, if it can provide this function, then I'll say that function, that object implements the string or method. I'm more on this, I'm using the word implement, and we haven't talked about how you implement stuff in Go. Don't worry about it, that's not important right now. The important is to get the concept that if I have an interface defined, and an object implements that interface, that object must provide definition or function definition for every method defined in that interface. And so we have a reader interface here, and it defines a method called read. Now it takes some parameters, which is not important right now, and it returns some values. And again, any object that provides an implementation for a function that has the name read with capital R with the exact same parameters, that's defined in the reader interface, and those same two return values, we're gonna say that that object implements the reader method. And so you can come up with some object, some type, that implements all these functions you see here, and what we'll say is that object implements the doc interface, the stringer interface, the reader interface, and the writer interface. So any one type can implement all of these interfaces simply by providing an implementation or a definition for all those methods. All right, so how do we draw a line between structs and interfaces? When we define a structure, if you remember, when we said we had a struct, regardless of it was a literal struct, or struct literal, or it was we, we nailed it down with a type definition, we said that what we're really doing is saying what are all the types that uh, make up, uh, that come that are in that structure. So we're really talking about how, what does memory layout look like, right? So when we say we have like a struct person and we said, person have a name and an age and a social security number, we're kind of saying that oh, if I ever create a person, Veral, in memory somewhere, I should have enough memory to be able to store his name, his age, and a social security number. Okay, now your struct can also have a field that's also a type, that, that's allowed. And I, all I'm saying then is that I have a field that should be able to have enough space and memory to store information that gets me to some other value that would implement some other the struct interface. So uh, a little confusing there when I mentioned that oh, inside a struct you can have a field that's also um, that's a field whose type is an interface. Don't worry about that. Because an interface is all type, you can of course say that oh, you have fields in a structure of that type or even variables of an interface type. We're going to get to all of that. I mention it because when you see it and the more often you hear something like I said, if I believe that if I tell you what I'm going to tell you, tell it, show it to you, or tell it to you, and then tell you what I just told you, repetition, rep, repetition, you will, um, not reputation, but repetition, you will be, you know, it, it would help sink in because you're here so many more times, okay? All right. Any new idea, um, you know, something is new to you at some point, and so you will have to hear it at least the first time somewhere. So... Um, don't be surprised if this is the first time you're hearing words like implementation and interface and so on. But the more often you hear it, eventually it will make sense. So don't give up or don't get frustrated if it seems like a lot of new words. We can um, play with it. Okay. So what is an interface then? So if the structure allows you to say how things are laid out in memory, right? How memory is consumed and used up when I create variables or I have values of a certain type. Right, remember values get stored in variables. Um, then the interface says, once I have a value, what can I do with this um, value? What are the legal operations I can perform on it? Right. So, for example, if I have a time value, right, stored in some variable, what are legal operations I could perform on it? And I could ask 
for the date i can ask for the year we didn't do that but i can also ask for the unix representation um, call the unix method to get the number associated with the time and if you don't know how time is kept and blah 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 and why unix the word unix is used there don't worry about that that's not important the important thing here is that there are functions defined for the time um type and any value that's a time type you can call those method on it okay and so what actions can be taken in manipulating a value which implements this interface all right a lot of words there so how do types implement interfaces so this really shouldn't be how do types implement interfaces but it, it, let's just take it loosely as that and what i'm showing is on one side we have all the types we saw before uh, my duck interface my stringer interface my reader interface my writer interface and on the other side i have some types i have a duck type and really uh, i shouldn't call it duck type um, let's call this a type of duck is called a indian runner i had to go look up some duck types i don't know different duck types i know there are types of ducks i didn't know the names though so one duck type is called indian runner right and so for my indian runner maybe i want to start a duck racing league <laughs> and so i'll create um struct type to represent the different types of um ducks i'm gonna allow in my leagues that are allowed to be in my running duck running league and for each duck i'm gonna have a name because you know let's say we're talking about horse race for example there are different breeds of horse horses and each horse in the race have a name right lightning whatever i don't even follow horse race so i don't know but i know that the horses do have name in a race right and so um so that i want to keep track of my ducks um who participate in the race and of course i have to know the type and of course maybe i want to keep the track of their weight also right maybe I put them in different weight class or something don't want to put a light duck up against a big fat heavy duck maybe they collide and be a disaster i want people to not sign into my duck race sing league okay all right so my indian duck runner type with my will if it wants to be considered a duck because uh, you know if, if anything is going to participate in my duck racing league gotta implement the duck interface because i'm going to need to be able to call on that duck instance or object hey i want you to quack i want you to waddle okay and maybe that's how i judge what's a good duck in my duck league right um and also my duck might uh my indian runner might choose to inter implement the stringer interface for whatever reason basically to take a variable of indian runner and turn it into some nice string and maybe it combines the name and the weight in some way and returns that okay same thing with a person i have a person who wants to pretend to be a duck you know they're gonna make a cracking song I, i'm not gonna do it and waddle around okay that, that's fine if i can say to a person hey you quack and you waddle i'm not saying they're a duck but certainly i i can wherever i need to have a quacking song or waddle i can certainly use a person assuming that that's what the interface i implement um might also my person might decide to implement also the stringer interface so that when you have a person variable or um object i might say which is a value from the person type so it's a very will say it's an object and so if you have that and you said hey i want to call the string method that you implement because remember in order for person to implement the stringer interface person must provide a method or a function that implements this method that we have in our stringer interface here and so we'll see what we mean by that when we say method and function they closely related but very different well you'll see and don't get tied up with that yet don't focus on that and of course my person might also implement the writer interface so that when you say you call write on a person they're able to write out the representation of a person somewhere else all right um so again this is just broadly to show that any one type can implement many interf multiple interfaces without getting into the details of whether it makes sense for a person to be implementing the duck interface that's not what we're really 
trying to discuss here would make sense. We're trying to say, you just can be done if you want to turn your code. Now, I mentioned this before and I'm showing you again. A type implements an interface if and only if it provides all the function or it provides function definition for all the methods of that interface. Okay, so if person decides to provide an implementation for quack only, I cannot say at all person implements the duck interface because they didn't provide a function definition for both the function or all the functions in that interface, which means that if somebody says I, in a function, I want a duck and I were to give them a person who only implemented quack, that function might try to call waddle and person will be like, I don't know how to waddle. Well, no, you're not a duck. Okay. Does it make sense? All right. So enough talking for this video is too long. Like I said, we'll have enough time to trip over interfaces. So let's get started. So I made a new directory CD into it. I'm going to do code. And um, once this thing, and let's zoom in here. I keep forgetting to zoom in some of the videos, but uh, let's do that. Let's do main that go and then our old friend package here and our own main function here. And we say FMT print line. And what are we talking about? We're talking about interface type, right? It's an interface. And so I'll put the definition for a fun um, for uh, an interface out here. But let me start off by doing the ones we know. So let's do type person and it's a struct. Uh, come on, will you close? I'm going to have to update my uh, thing, but person is a struct. This one we know, and we'll say person has a name only, right? And we're going to leave it as that. We're not going to worry about age and all this other stuff, right? But we could if we wanted to. All right. So I go back to my word immediately as I said it. Type Indian runner, right? Is also a struct. Remember type, okay? And I want to keep track of um, the name of my duck here, my Indian runner. I need set of Indian runner, Indian runners I create. Um, and wait, int. Okay, so those are types. All right. So of course we know that I can say stuff like var um, Bob is a person, um, and I, I can do equals to person. And give Bob a name and 35, whatever, right? And var Jane is equals to a person and Jane Doe and I need to let's see. I, I'm terrible at net names. I'm um, think try coming up with fake data. All right, so let's do FFT that print. F and we have all right so let's do this print person and we're gonna pass Bob and we will we'll pass Jane and let's do F U N C function print person and it's some P and takes person object and we can say FMT that print F if we want person name name colon percent F percent V H percent V and backline new line and then I want to do P that name and then P that H okay so this should work let's go run it run the main and hey wait, wait, da, 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 da. too many arguments to conversion to person da, da, da. what is it talking about oh ah this shouldn't be this this should be this all right so i want that ah, i'm not making a function call i'm creating an instance of person ah, ah. all right so there we go. And so now this should work. All right. And it does work as expected, right? I'm able to pass this to my function person and print it out. So like I said, person could choose to implement a, uh, a 
stringer the stringer interface and one way to get documentation of stringer interface is to just say go doc and stringer and it's an interface defined by the go language and stringer is a tool to automate the creation of method well this is a tool i don't want to use a tool i want to talk about the interface and so let's jump here and go here and we're going to go lang uh, uh, and we're going to go package and let's do to the stringer is the stringer interface defined here go lang stringer interface Stringer interface. Yep, package FMT. And so if we can get down to where the stringer interface is defined, come on. Scan in stringer, type stringer. Okay. So type stringer. Um, and here you go. Type stringer is an interface that has this method called string and it returns the value of string right and so what does this do stringer is implemented by any value that has a string method which define the native format for that value the string method is used to print values passed as an operand to any format that accept a string or to an unformatted printer such as print ah, never mind what all this may say basically saying is that we can use the fact that any method which implements the um, method string for the stringer interface is in fact implementing the stringer interface and there are these formatted things that take a stringer so let's just see it um, you have to talk it and read it so let's just see it so one way for my print person here is I can say it implements the string method remember I remember the string method had to re return what a string that's what it had to do be implemented a string method but it did not have a parameter so I'm gonna cut that out right when we look here it doesn't have a parameter the stringer interface says hey I just asking you to implement a string method a method or a function that has this signature which is the name is string takes no parameter and returns a string that's here but how do we know if you look here inside this implementation of this function, it still needs to know what the person is. We're getting this P, the name and H from. Well, that is from a person. Well, the way you specify that though, this method is actually imp is implementing something for the person type is you put it, you call a receiver in front of the name. So between the func keyword and the name of the function, you put these in parentheses um, which looks like a variable declaration, almost like what you would pass here to the function or outside here, you put this with what's called a receiver. So we can say now that this is compared to, if you compare these two, we usually call this just a function definition. Here we call this a method definition. Okay, so we're saying that how this person type implements the string method and because the stringer interface has only this method well person implements that method and now what does this bias by having um, so now we have to return a string right so let's just do that well actually uh, we can do it this way let's do Z Z and then return um, I think s printf s printf which basically takes all these formatted things and returns a string so that's what exactly what we're returning so if you look here s printf take a format and then all the values at the end which we'll get to notice all, all the values are just a variadic um, there's a function, there's a variadic function, and all the values are just interface, empty interfaces. We'll get there. 
all right to understand but anyway it returns a string and to know i'm going to return a string so this is my implementation of the string function or the string method from the in the stringer interface and to know that i have that look at what i can be able to do i can literally just call fmt that print ln fmt uh, fmt that print ln and now when i call that uh, print ln and i run it come on go run main All right let's clear the screen go run main and now you can see how this is being printed out well actually this doesn't need to return a new line in there because i'm calling it print line and so it pretty much look exactly the same as when i call that function okay except now my print line function here it knows that how anything that's passed it must implement the stringer interface so it calls a stringer on it now you might be thinking well wait a second you mean to tell me that if i create a duck runner say if i do something like this and i say i have a um var indian uh let's call it um a duck or duck one duck zero is equals to indian runner so this is one of my first duck and his name is speedy and weight is 25 why not or 12 okay that's a pretty big duck seven okay and you're saying well Varel, i'm pretty sure if you do fmt print line and you pass duck it's gonna print right um i would say too many arguments to indian runner jeez oh, i did the same thing again there's another function call and prison thing so and there it is it prints it out so what this is using is Go's ability to do reflection and we haven't talked about that but basically try to interrogate the type to find what values uh, what type it is and so since this is um, a struct Go's know how to print structs and map and so on like that right so it can interrogate it and it sort of creates you could think of it as a default implementation not really but it's usually a reflection to figure out what to print the fields and the values and it's using that to print out to do something sensible so we don't have to go define um you know a print method for this a, a, a string method a stringer method right it, we don't have to go sorry implement the stringer interface but if we did implement the stringer interface we can get a much nicer implementation so for duck we want to implement the stringer interface so we just go um, Indian runner we're gonna implement an interface and we're gonna return the string that says my Indian runner name d that name and d that wait and so notice how this same method the same method that the string method defined in our interface is being implemented differently by different types okay so now we have a second type implementing the stringer interface by simply providing a definition for the string function and and so now um, i don't know why it's complaining but again i gotta fix that sometime so now my indian runner name is is and ways you know this many pounds for example lbs right um or kilos whatever you want and so now when i rerun the same code notice how instead of using goes simple but still decent um string representation of our indian runner it's now using this much nicer one one okay and so now if we were to create another duck type call i think it's got what avail or something like that 
right? And it also has a name here in string because um, again, I'm creating this duck lead league. Um, and okay, I just randomly chose duck. I don't really have anything for or against duck. They're just interesting looking, but other than that, nothing. So what avail and we call a swimmer and swimmer is probably six pounds or whatever. And again, I'm going to print out um, duck one, which is a water veil duck. And so again, it's going to print out something which looks very much like what we had before. But if we want a nicer um, print out, we're going to do water veil and then my water veil name is that or that, whatever. And now when I run this, notice I get a different output. Now, I don't want this video to go on too long. In the next video, we're going to see how um, having been able to implement interfaces, we've kind of hinted at it here, right? We, we, we see it all this print line implements the interface, or sorry, print line function expect or accept any object that implements the stringer interface and knows how to use it. And so we were able to pass objects that implement it. Even when we didn't implement it, Golang was smart enough to know what to do. If you look at the implementation of print line, you'll see how it navigates that, okay? All right, we're gonna see in, another, in the next video why this is so important to be able to say, well, okay, I wanna ensure that what I'm being given I've been giving or what's been passed to me as a function, for example, implements a certain method. And so here we didn't really implement an interface, so we should. So for example, before we close off, let's implement the duck interface. So we say type duck is an interface and the two methods that it accept is quack, B-U-A-C-K, quack, and W-A-D-D-L-E, waddle. Right, that's what we said before. That is our doc interface, and so what we can do is we can say that oh, I have a function called use duck or duck like stuff or duck like values. Right, what do you want? And you expect any some anything that implements the duck interface because if it's you're going to use duck like values or use duck, it doesn't really care. It's just so long as what is passed it satisfies this interface. And so now this guy can say D that I want to quack with the duck that's given to me and I want to waddle with the duck that's given to me. And so this function now, knowing that how it can call these two metal methods, it is it guarantees that it can call these two methods without any exception or problem because whatever value is passed it as D we must implement this interface duck and the interface duck defines that how these two methods are available. And so now if we try to say, let's call use duck and pass in D zero, um, duck zero, we're gonna have an error because duck zero does not, see, Indian runner does not implement duck, missing quack method. And of course, uh, if we implement another method, it's just, it should really tell us that we're making, missing all the methods here. But, um, you know, itself we implement, so there's Indian Runner, and we said it can implement multiple interfaces. And so we're going to let Indian Runner implement the Quack interface. And so now it just implement the Quack interface. My Indian Runner is quacking. And this function, the quack interface function method, does not expect any return value. So you can't be returning anything. And so here's my if you so for my Indian runner, if you have an Indian runner um very ob variable or object and you call the quack method, this is what you're gonna get. But so you can definitely do that with an Indian runner. You can say, you know. Um, you know, duck zero that quack, 
But notice how my editor shows me that the only two methods available is quack and string. Okay? <laughs> and so I can call that, but I still wouldn't be able to pass it to use doc. And as we will see, let's make sure that we can call that function that method first. So this is gonna work fine. Okay, that method is available, right? There it is. I'm gonna do a print. Um, so this was a print F and I'll put a new line here so we can have a nice printout. All right, so you can see my Indian runner is quacking because it implements a method called quack and I can call that method but I still cannot pass it to use duck because use duck says, hey, if you're gonna, I'm gonna accept anything, it must be a, of a, a variable that in our value that, or that implements the duck interface. And those are the two methods. And now when we run this again, it tells us it's missing the waddle interface or the waddle method, right? And so we would need to implement waddle for Indian runner for it to be considered a duck. And I said that before that for a type to, to be to implement an interface, it must implement all methods of that interface. So we need the waddle method. And so now we can say my Indian runner is waddling. And now, now our function will run. And this is fine, right? So hopefully, this is really quick whirlwind tour, but Hopefully, I've demonstrated how you separate the layout of a type in memory versus what is possible or the operations you can call on that type. And then how you can tie those two together by saying, using a method that defines a function with a receiver to say that how oh, that type implements the set of functions as required by the interface. We're going to continue along this line and hopefully you get it that way. Again, please post questions, ask, um, you know, or suggestions, or you think um, it could be made better. If, you, if this explanation didn't do it for you, let me know and I'll try a different way, some more diagrams whatsoever. All right. Very, um, video is probably more than half an hour long, so let's cut it here. Thanks for your time again. I do appreciate it. Um, take care. Practice and subscribe if you haven't. Spread a word if you know anyone who would be interested. Um, just let them check it out and see what they think. Okay, see you in, in the next video. So it's the weekend here in the US. So I won't be posting a video over the weekend. Uh, one For one thing, I have to work this weekend. But um, So what I'll do is I'll try and just post videos during the week only. So from Monday to Friday, five videos a week. And then that way on the weekend, um, I can either spend that developing the videos for the following week and that way during the week we don't have an interruption of videos and then we can I can if I have to work or whatever it's not going to be a problem it's not this random thing of when videos are going to come out so all right I'll shoot for that from next week to start being able to post videos five days a week Monday through Fridays week week US all right take care um, bye see you